thanks for joining me for another episode of What's That All About? So there is a mansion in San Jose, California, that's been called perhaps America's first official haunted house. Now, you may disagree with that, but I'm just going by my research. <laughs> it um, was once the personal home to Sarah Winchester, the widow to the late firearms producer William uh, Winchester, which you can see the gun right there. The house became a tourist attraction just nine months after um, Sarah died. And that was in September of 1922, I believe on September 5th of 1922. And I can certainly see why, because this is such a fascinating, I would say architectural marvel to some extent. Um, the house is, it's now apparently open to the public and does tours, paranormal activity. Um, teams go there and do a lot of their, you know, whatever their investigations and whatnot and have reported tons of stuff but we will get to that so first i you know according to the legend after enduring a lot of personal tragedy um sarah winchester actually they the winchesters were living in connecticut and she experienced the death of a child of a very young daughter and her husband she in her kind of really fragile state i believe went and saw a um, Boston medium, okay? And this medium told her she was being haunted by the angry spirits of those killed by the Winchester um, rifles. What a terrible thing to tell, a, like a grieving widow. But anyway, the medium told her to move out west, if you can believe that, and build a house for all the spirits to come stay in. So as long as she never stopped building onto the house, which ended up being, by the way, 24,000 square feet with 160 rooms, 110 of which are open to the public. I want to see what the other 50 look like personally, but I digress. Now, it's, I think, interesting to say that this medium told her about, you know, building this enormous house and doing these things for these spirits. I mean, what did she have to do? Send out, you know, like we've moved cards for these spirits. How are they supposed to know where she was going? I guess if they were attached to her in some way, they would have followed her anywhere. And I think that's actually what Sarah Winchester believed, um, or she was led to believe anyway. Now, the house is a labyrinth, okay? It's filled with confusing features like staircases that go straight into the ceiling and windows that are indoors <laughs> between rooms. Um, they got doors that open up into walls, dead ends, and even skylights emerging from the floors. So the most dramatic element that I saw was, um, it's called the doorway to nowhere. Okay, it's on the second floor. And if you open this doorway and proceed to try and walk through it, you're going straight down two stories into the garden, which is another marvel all of its own, but we'll get to that later too. Um, now, it's said that the confusing architecture was to ward off unwanted spirits. See, she was very, Sarah had been convinced that, I mean, everything was about spirituality for her. Um, so she even added secret passageways as another way to trick them as to where she was. So, you know, another specific detail, very specific actually, is the seance room. Okay, there's only one way in, but there are three ways out. Okay, one of them is disguised as a closet and the other <laughs> becomes an unexpected drop into the kitchen sink below. Awesome. Sarah said she created the room this way so that she could exit the room after speaking with the spirits this way that she wouldn't be followed. They wouldn't be able to find her after she was done talking with them. She could go back about her day. Yeah, now Sarah was wealthy. Okay, she was beyond imagination wealthy at, at this time. Okay, she had an inheritance of twenty million dollars, which is like over five hundred million today. So that's a that's a fairly nice chunk. Plus, she owned half of the Winchester Rifle Company's fortune, and she got one thousand dollars per day, you know, as a, as a salary. It's like she won lucky for life or something. 
Um, but the wealth allowed her to continuously do these like extravagant build-ons to this. Now she's just kept doing what the medium told her to do, build, build, and build some more. So she just kept going. Now she has a ballroom seen here that she used wood, expensive woods like mahogany, teak, rosewood. Um, she also was an avid collector of artisan windows and it, you know, it's like they can be seen in a room that she actually, or they actually named. I'm not sure if she named it this, but the people who run the Winchester house now call it the $25,000 room. I don't know if that means everything in it costs at least $25,000, but from the looks of it, that could be the possibility. <laughs> now, there was even a glass window specially made by Tiffany's, if you can believe it. I cannot even imagine the millions that's worth today. Now, another unique feature of the house are the spider web windows and motifs that are all uh, throughout the house, okay? And also the number 13. Now, I, I know I've told you about the number 13 and me saying it in my in near or around my husband or in our house. We don't say that number. He is currently not in the house. So I'm getting this in so that I don't get in trouble because he would probably freak out. Um, there are... This is where 13 pops up, ready? 13 bathrooms, windows with 13 panes, chandeliers that hold 13 candles, 13 hooks in some closets, and 13 ceiling um, panels in the entranceway. I mean, there's so many more, but she was absolute, Sarah was absolutely obsessed with the number 13. This house even had a room with no floor and no ceiling that was creepily behind and it joined her bedroom with the seance room. I don't know about you, but I would not want anything at all connecting me to the seance room. Just saying, not saying. Uh, she still holds the Guinness Book world record for the longest continuous house construction at 38 years. Look, I buckle after three months of construction. I cannot imagine 38 years. Okay, the inside of the house is undeniably strange. But the outside has some of its own oddities. I was talking about the garden. So, for example, there is a $20,000 English hew tree that um, towers over 12,000 boxwood hedges, 1,500 major plants of all different types, shrubs, trees, and even greenery called monkey puzzle. I had never heard of monkey puzzle. Have you heard of monkey puzzle? Monkey puzzle. Love it. It's actually native to Chile, though. So another very unique and probably quite extravagant purchase at the time in the 1920s, right? Um, so certainly an expensive thumb. She definitely had a, a green thumb, but an expensive one to boot. But last but not least, I'd be remiss if I didn't, you know, of course, mention the spirits that are supposedly in the house. Now, people, visitors, including investigators, have heard footsteps throughout the entire house. It creaks, it, you know, every house creaks. This one talks. It's got cabinets that open. You can be walking, you walk into a room, everything seems normal. You turn your back for a second and back again and cabinets can be opened that you didn't even hear open. And then you go to open them and they creak. Yeah, so don't know. I mean, I want to, I'm, I'm actually throwing this on my bucket list because it sounds so intriguing and it's gorgeous. I mean, just, well, it's, I say gorgeous in the sense of like, it's extravagant, I guess it's gorgeous and it's extravagance, right? It's got so much potential in there. Um, and I do want to, I would have totally want somebody to like throw a diversion down so I could like sneak into one of the 50 rooms that's off limits just because I'm a little hellion like that. But today, you know, investigators have a video that they that they claimed I read one thing that said they saw this ripple effect in the basement that showed the same movement in a circle so it was like something or someone or spirit of or something was just continuously going around in a circle <laughs> that makes my skin crawl <laughs> but there is just no denying how cool this place is you know, would be. And would you go? I mean, seriously, would you go or would it scare you too much? I don't know. I think I'm, I'm ready for a road trip myself, but I hope you enjoyed this. I thought it was fascinating. Um, and until next week, stay happy and healthy.
and stay weird. Please stay weird and take care. Bye.